Harry French. I'm the area lead for fulfilling noise in Hastings. Can you tell me what's happening today? Yep. Um, so each year we put on an event, like a learning event, and we started planning about six months ago, and we were wondering what to do. And one of the project consultants, who's a former user of services, suggested we do a living library, which was news to me. I didn't know what a living library was. And we looked into that. It was a great idea, and um, where people who have used services come in and other people can talk to them about their experience um, or experiences and sort of further to discussions with the project consultants and other volunteers we decided we wanted to base that around stigma and the impact that, that can have on people's recovery and uh, it sort of stemmed from there really so the living library has always been the central part of it um, which is you know only right and proper that you know actually talking to people would be the main part of it but we then sort of decided to make it into a kind of interactive gallery event with films box pops recordings um, uh, like a gallery pictures stuff like that and we did it in partnership with east sussex recovery alliance which was great because um, brought links in between those two organizations and uh, it turned into so it's turned into something quite big really and that's what we're rushing around trying to get that sorted uh, with not too long to go so i'm going to get back to it <laughs> So I'm going to get about it while we're doing it. So nice to see you. I'm Gary. I'm from Flynn Lines, and this is kind of a multimedia tackling stigma event. There are vox pops recordings uh, made by people. There's a lot of stuff done by East Sussex Recovery Lines as well. Creative writing. There's a lot of pictures. There's some artwork. There are some films, and there are some recordings. Um, so um, yep, enjoy it. And there's some cake and some drink as well. Because it's Friday afternoon, so there's drinks and cake as well. For 10 minutes. The reason we're filming it is to get in interviews with people to get some feedback about how it made them feel. Hi there. So I'm just taking bookings for the next session for maybe 10 or 15 minutes' time. It is, yes. Yeah. And you need to wear, but you need to put the headphones on to get the full experience and sit down here. Just the one video. Last two two minutes, about two minutes, 30 seconds. Well, I'm so. Yeah. Videos are really interesting. But I think the most I think today there's, there's many different. Um, kind of contributing factors for, for me from my perspective and one of them is a learning event around stigma and looking at stigma and making people aware of, of stigma and, and asking the questions how what are the solutions other than labelling people um, you know um, putting tags on people and the effect that that can also have on, 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 on people and, and their recovery um, the second kind of angle would be reducing the stigma between services and, and workers within services. We've got so many different services here today under the same roof, in the same environment, and everyone's talking, you know, and everyone's sharing ideas and everyone's sharing potential solutions and, and areas of, 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 of co-working. And it's also for me about the, especially for the, from the Living Library's perspective of sharing our story and how sharing our story can have a powerful impact not only on ourselves but on the, on the lives of others, on, on listeners and hopefully via through sharing our stories that could hopefully you know empower other people to share their stories and not be afraid of of choices that they've made in the past of you know allowing people to look beyond the choices that some people make and and to see a person there my name is chris and i've uh, been a volunteer for uh, fulfilling lives on the action group for the last 15 months i am currently two and a half years uh, sober from uh, uh, being uh, a very bad alcoholic. Uh, I've spent three months in rehab and currently I am with Alcoholics Anonymous uh, and I've been for the last over two years now. I always sort of really had a bit of a problem with drink. Uh, before I went to jail, I worked full time. I was a nurse, but I was a fun functioning alcoholic um, it wasn't until I actually went to prison, everything spiralled down. Uh, I couldn't really get a job because of the criminal conviction and I ended up drinking down on the seafront. I, I was having a, uh, a row with, uh, with a friend, uh, it got into a fist fight, it spilled out into the street, the police were driving past and the rest is history. Uh, and that was it. I think most of the stigma I've brought on myself, I've stigmatised myself, um, thinking I'll, you know, I'll, I'm not going to get a job because of my criminal record. So I just gave up, you know, um, I gave up 
looking for a job. Um, I've been stigmatised in hospital um, uh, by nurses uh, who basically, I fell out of bed one time and they said, just leave that piss head on the floor, leave him to sleep it off. I've been sober for you know, two and a half years. Uh, I've been a volunteer for Fulling Lives for nearly 15 months. And I've totally changed my life around. But uh, there's not only that as well, I could see where I've been stigmatising people as well. Because up until about a year ago, I wouldn't talk to you if you took hard drugs. You know, I wouldn't entertain you. Um, but everything has changed my thinking now. Uh, there's a story behind everybody's addiction. You know, you can't just label people. Uh, it's took me a while to realise that. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's gone today. Um, I have to say that I haven't had that much um, involvement in the actual huge amount of planning that's gone on. So I've just had quite a good gig. I've just sort of turned up and said a few words. But from what the informal feedback I've had from talking to people has been really positive and people are really interested in the format. It's quite different. Um, lots of people, um, lots of questions, lots of people reflecting that it's made them, you know, been thought provoking. And uh, yeah, so I'm really pleased. It's, there's been a bit of a buzz today. I think the numbers have been about right. So yeah, I'm pleased. Good. Have you ever been the victim of a stigmatisation yourself? Um, I have. I've been, I think I'm, everyone can connect with um, some of the issues that we're, we're dealing with. And I think everyone has, for what, everyone has a reason for being involved in, in the work we, we do um, for fulfilling lives. Um, I haven't personally been in the role but I have had close family members and friends effect, affected by by some of the issues that we're that we're concerned with so yeah I think it's it is about connecting on a personal level and that's what makes it all the more poignant I think when you can think about a loved one um, and feel just feel about the injustice I think it get it yeah it, it gets you there um, stigma comes from um, it comes from people for one and it's just the, um, the system, how things, how things work. Because basically, stigma comes from the top. People that don't know. That's what we. But people that don't know about the system, they've got all these big qualifications. Do you know what I mean? How to break stigma is talking to service users, people at the bottom, people that are, that are actually living it, and then creating a platform with professionals and service users to come together as equals. To change to change a system that will work. That is that is that is the key to a better life because the bottom line is the system ain't working. What are you using there? It's a PVA. Is that a glue of some sort? Yeah. But, um, so what we do, we do, we're just experimenting with stuff and then we burn it afterwards. Oh. We, yeah, with a t yeah, use a torch, a blow torch. Mm. You know, it sort of evolves into yeah, you don't really know what it's going to evolve into in something. I was just trying out different things. I've really enjoyed it. It's been um, a lot of fun and, and interesting to be able to go around and um, engage with the different things that are available, rather than um, coming to something where you have to sit and be, you know, listen to what's being being said to you, sort of thing. And how do you address stigma in your professional life? Crikey, how do you experience it? We come across it regularly. Um, it's a a real challenge with the the client group that we work with trying to um, engage especially with landlords from the private sector uh, with families who have who have children or relatives that may have been in prison or maybe um, have substance abuse problems or mental health problems trying to move past the image of, of, of a homeless person towards um, towards accepting that, they, that they're still the same person, you know, they're still people underneath that is, is a real challenge, especially I'd say particularly with private sector landlords and um, making sure that they feel as though they're people they can engage with and, and are resp can be responsible with the right level of support and just need, just need a, a chance really. It's a real challenge. Have you ever been a victim of uh, stigma yourself? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm a white middle class male, so not a great deal. But I suppose that has its own stigmas associated with it as well. <laughs> That's an interesting thought. Yeah. Have you ever been guilty of prejudging? Yes, certainly. Without doubt. Yeah. 
and we've all got prejudices, haven't we, which are automatic. I think the trick is to try and try and uh, recognise them when they emerge and uh, avoid them. <laughs> I suppose it's, on a practical level, the people that I'm trying to support, um, I think the impact is, is often that they have no belief that there is any alternative to where they actually are at the moment and where they've been in the past. And on a personal level, sort of a self-reflection of the things that have held me back in my own life because I felt, as I think a lot of clients do, worthless, not able to achieve things, do you mind me asking why you felt worthless? That's us. Parenting, I think. Parenting. Constantly being told, shouted at, you know, to blame for things that you couldn't possibly to be blamed for. But when you're three, growing up beyond there, you can't work that out. You know? How did you get around that? I didn't have a spirit dog when I was 30. That's... that's the God's honest truth of it, really. And I got two years where I just spent a few months in bed, sat on a sofa in my lounge. Um, I had a good old bloody thing, to be honest with you, about who I was as a human being. That's a fantastic answer, thank you. And you now feel able to address other people's issues through having had that experience? I do. Um, I do have moments of, of still my own self. Though. <laughs> Which, to be honest, I think oh, well, doors opening everywhere, isn't it? Um, which I think reminds me of how difficult it can be to move forward and change things for better. I believe that you can get a slice of the cake rather than crumbs that have fallen on the floor, if to, to use that analogy. Um, and I think it gives you, or it gives me. I think a realism of knowing where that person is. That you can't just say to that person, look, if you go to this place, there'll be this opportunity for you. Because that, I think for me, that person, looking at my own experiences, I would have always had a fear to go to that place. You know, am I the person, have I got value within myself to even go there and take that opportunity? Because I'm not middle class. I've not been brought up in a certain way because I have all these things going around in my head that actually I'll stay safe in this little, this little cubby hole, really. So I suppose that's what it gives me is, is the belief that, that through energy, and support meaning not just words, support should be about, come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go to this place, let's go, let me walk you there. Because if I walk you there once, I might not have to walk you there twice, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also second guessing, I think with clients, and I do this quite a lot. And I, I, I think generally, I think clients appreciate is is knowing for me that that a lot of people that I'm trying to support or get my staff to support is that there's a recognition for me that I used to think if people looked at me, they knew, they knew my life, they knew what I've been through, they knew the horrors that I've been through, they knew what was going on in my head, they knew I was worthless. And I think for a lot of the people I'm trying to support, they're in that same position. That they think people can just tell by looking at them all their secrets. So I think that's probably the, the most... I may be wrong on this. I'm not arrogant enough to think that I know everything. But when I've spoken to clients and I've proposed that that might be something that occurs for them, I've never had a client disagree with me. I've really enjoyed um, seeing people interacting um, with the, the Vox Pops um, and the Living Library um, and, and the way that it's affected people, the comments that I've had from people, you know, it's, it has made people think, which was the whole idea of us doing this really, it was to make people think about um, what they're saying and how they're saying it, because we all do it, um, sort of stigmatising sometimes without realising it. Um, and I think this is just, it's done the job. It's done what, what we wanted it to do. Well, that was great. So the first session, 28 people came, and I think about 26 of those came through in the first five minutes. So it was absolutely bedlam. So it was a bit like having a rock gig or something. And um, so, yeah, it's gone really well. But the main thing is, I think, is the two main things are, is that the, um, the living libraries, the people doing the living libraries, to really thrive and you could really tell that people got so much from talking to them. 
uh, and the other stuff went down really well as well but that was the main thing I think and some of the feedback looks fantastic um, I suppose really what the concept of what we're trying to do is, is just to get people to look the, take a little moment and reflect on what stigma can do to people uh, not just in the you know in, broad, in broader society but also um, within services and if it's if it will have helped change that a little bit which I'm sure it will in the ongoing work that we'll all do together with our partners who really seem to get get that message then uh, it could make a big difference and uh, that's what it's all about so yeah I'm chuffed so job done yeah hopefully yeah well plenty more work to go plenty more things to do but yeah it's a good start um, we're speaking to